Today, I have an old Dell Bostro, 3300 13 inch laptop. We're going to see if we can bring it up to date a little and make it a lot faster and a good usable computer with Windows 10. Let's get at it. Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I got an old Dell laptop. It's an old Dell Wolfstro 3300, 13 inch. Um, it works, it has Windows 7 on it, it is old, um, but they, the customer wanna know if we could bring it up to date, make it faster, so it's a usable computer. Mainly I just wanna, I think, use it for internet. Uh, it's got old wireless N in it, wireless N in it, and it does have an ethernet port though. Um, but as you can see, it is old, and it's a, what is it, a Core i3 M370 processor, um, four gigs of DDR2 memory, a 320 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. So I'm just gonna see if we can make it a little better and, and faster and, and see what happens. Um, it's got a standard 1366 by 768 display, and there's no data on here the customer cares about whatsoever. I am gonna shut it down. And we're gonna just do um, a clean install of Windows 10 and then activate the Windows 10 using their Windows 7 product key, which is still completely intact underneath the battery on the back side. And what I'm gonna put in it is a brand new Crucial MX500 series, two and a half inch SATA solid state drive. And then I'm gonna do the clean install of Windows 10. <laughs> So hopefully with the new solid state drive in there and a clean install of Windows 10, it should be good enough to you know, do some basic stuff on it and get on the internet and maybe a few other things. So um, the other thing is too, the battery in it uh, is absolutely shot. You have to have it plugged in all the time to do anything. If you unplug it, it just goes off. I did order the customer a new battery, um, a genuine Dell battery. They're about, um, was about 45 bucks for a new battery. And underneath the battery is the Windows 7, the old COA or product key, they call it. And that should activate Windows 10. Um, totally fine, totally legal. Uh, Microsoft's still doing that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up the bottom. You see there's only two screws here to get inside. And this panel here pops right off and our old hard drive should be right here. So let me get these two Phillips screws out of here using a number Phillips screwdriver. <coughs> And forgive the interruptions, guys. I'm, I'm here alone today. And then you just pop this little cover off right here. Gain access. And there's our hard drive. Two Phillips screws right here to get it out. And there's our DDR2 memory. Uh, two, two gig sticks, a total of four. So um, let me go ahead and pop this battery out of here as long as I got it here. I'm gonna flip it over. And there's the battery. And there's our Windows 7 product key right there that we're going to use to activate Windows 10, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> for a while there, a long time ago, Microsoft stopped doing that, but they want everybody to get into Windows 10, so they're activating Windows 10 with Windows 7 COE, so to speak. So we're just going to pull this up, and we got to take this little mounting bracket off this 2.5 inch hard drive. There's just two screws holding it on. We're gonna use that on our SATA drive. Might have to use the spacer adapter that comes with the drive, possibly, so it'll fit in there properly, but we'll see here in a second. This is our new SATA drive. But surprisingly, on some of these old laptops, even old desktops with these old processors, they run surprisingly fast with Windows 10 and a new solid state drive. This is just a 250 gig SATA SSD, but it's gonna be more than enough for Windows 10 and a bunch of other stuff they might wanna put on it. Now there's an adapter here. Gonna have to use that, it looks like. Let me get this. Oh, bad, my bad. I'll show you in a second. There's a special adapter you can see here, it doesn't, it, it's got a weird SATA connector here that uses this adapter. I'll show you here in a second as soon as I get this off. Try to keep it intact, we'll put that right back on. 
after we put this little guy on, we have to pull this off and place it on here. I'm going to plug this into there. And it's going to sit down in just like that. The little caddy on here. It's kind of how they did, did it back then. A lot of laptops were like that. But gaining access to the drive is quite a bit easier than most of the new laptops. You don't have to take out all the screws and rip the bottom panel off. I get a lot of these old laptops in here like this that people want to keep using. It seems to work good. It's in good shape, very clean. This one's been sitting, she said, for about three years, not even used. So now that we got that on there, we're going to just pop it back in here, hopefully. Just like that, and it goes in good. We don't, we don't need our little spacer adapter that came with it. Looks like a good tight fit. So I'll put the two screws back in. Hold everything in place. But yeah, once they get the new battery in there, they'll have a laptop they can use. Even a brand new battery on these old models, you'd be lucky if you get maybe two and a half to three hours out of it, which is fine. I'm just gonna leave the battery right out of it. We don't need that in there at the moment. But this has just got standard Intel HD graphics, the old Intel with that old processor. But all the drivers, drivers we need should be included right with the Windows 10 install, <clears throat> hopefully. Kind of hit and miss on these old laptops when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I'm going to plug in our power cord here. I'm going to put in my Windows 10 flash drive here to boot off of. Just find a USB port here and power it on. But yeah, it's in really good shape. Doesn't look like it's been used that much. We'll go to F12, get our boot options. So here's our, I know it's hard to see, but there's our Kingston flash drive. Let's see if we can boot off that. Get the Windows 10 install going, hopefully. If not, we might have to do some trickery in the BIOS, because sometimes these are a little fussy about booting. I might have to try a different, yeah, it looks like it's not gonna wanna go. All right, guys, um, I just wasn't being patient, so I'm gonna, I got my uh, Windows 10 USB install drive in there. I'm gonna turn it back on again. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it go. And it's gonna probably default to that drive. Just with these older laptops and the old USB with the USB 3.0 flash drive I'm using, this seems like it doesn't wanna go, but it's gonna go. I checked in the BIOS, it is set for AHCI, not IDE or anything like that. So we just gotta be patient, let it boot off the flash drive here. I just wanna walk you through this 10 install real quick so you can kinda see what's going on. There it goes, see now it's booting off the flash drive. I was being impatient, I do that a lot these days. <laughs> So I'm just gonna click on next for United States. I'm gonna click install now. Hopefully get a good clean install of Windows 10 20H2 on here. Now here I'm gonna choose, instead of putting in my product key, cause I'm not connected to the internet, I'm just gonna click on the bottom here where it says I don't have a product key. I'm just gonna click on that. And it is Windows 10 Home because it has a Windows 7 Home on it. So we're going to choose that. Or it had Windows 7 Home on it on the old clunky hard drive here. Then I'm going to accept the license terms. I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to choose Custom. And there, okay, there's our solid state um, S, uh, SATA SSD. Going to click Next. And let it get copying there. So I'm, when it's almost done, I'm gonna come back. I'm not gonna just sit here and bore you with this. So I'll be back and I'm gonna let this get started here. It says copying files. It's already done that. Okay, good. So I'm gonna let this go, guys. I'll be back in just a few. All right, guys, so what I did here, I'm just gonna, I can't unplug it because I 
remember I took the battery out. So I'm going to just flip it up here and show you. Underneath here is the Windows 7 product key. Can't show you the key, obviously, but it's a Windows 7 Home. So I copied that onto the computer already, and I'll show you all you got to do. Now I have plugged in my Ethernet cable here because we have internet, Windows 10 install, installed the Ethernet drivers and the Wi-Fi as far as that goes. So I'm going to sign back in here. And I'm going to go over here to the start menu, click on start. I'm going to just go to settings. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but down at the bottom it says Windows isn't activated. Activate Windows now. So I'm just going to click on that. And then down at the very bottom here, it says change product key. I never entered one when I installed this. So I'm going to click on that. Then in here, I'm going to enter my Windows 7 home product key. And I'm going to click next. And it's going to validate the key first to see if it's an actual legitimate Windows key. That takes a minute. You have to be connected to the internet to be doing this part. All right, so now it accepted the key as being valid. Now we got to try to activate. So I'm just going to click here where it says activate. You can see right above it says up here, Windows is not activated, Windows 10 Home. And once I get it activated, when it activates, I'll get all the Windows updates, so I get all the drivers, all the chipset and the old video and all that fun stuff. But it's already got the Ethernet installed, the Wi-Fi drivers installed, the old wireless N. Got to be patient because this part does take a couple of minutes. Boom, it just activated. Windows is activated. And I just used the Windows 7 product key that came with this thing about 11 years ago. I actually looked it up with the service tag, service tag number, which is still well intact underneath. And I just went to Dell's website and punched it in and boom, there it is. The warranty ran out on this thing in 2011, so it's probably from like 2010, this model. So it's all activated with a digital license, and so we're good to go on that. It's just a matter now going to update and I'll start the Windows update process it's gonna look and find all kinds of updates once it do, does this first round and I know there'll be lots of optional updates for the drivers and stuff I'll just get everything that I can and we should be go you should be good to go I'll throw a browser on there and it's actually a pretty fast little computer now running Windows 10 uh, with a good activation so there, we took an old computer, going to make it usable again with a new SSD, a SATA, two and a half inch drive. Should, should work good. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate it. If you like it, give me a like. If you loved it, give me a sub. That would be great. Um, watch some more of my videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.